New Year. Welcome to this very day. We are so delighted that today we get to hear our Associate Regional Minister, Carolyn Reed. She's been with us in person back when we used to meet in person. She has been with us to preach, and I think you've even seen her maybe last spring when she offered another sermon for us. It's good to remember that we are a connected church. It's also good to remember that there are more than one shepherd for this place. Carolyn is a trusted friend, a trusted leader, and one who has wisdom that even surprises her, I have a feeling. May this sermon today bless you. As we gather today, this first Sunday of a new year, 2021, we have high hopes of a better year ahead. Even in the midst of this pandemic and new viruses that are bound to come, we still trust in God. And we look forward to that day where we can worship together in person safely. Please refer to the Facebook page or contact me if you have any questions about our prayer requests, our prayer list. If you have any needs, please contact me or the church office. Uh, we'll do what we can to help support you on this journey. Would you now join me in our morning prayer and then we'll have our worship together. Would you pray with me? God of all seasons, we come to you in the waning of this year. We confess that last year has been quite miserable. None of us would have seen a year ago a pandemic was coming. None of us could see the hardship, the suffering, the loss of jobs, the despair, the panic and death. And yet we have experienced all of those. We confess our brokenness to you, O oh God. Our broken systems that are supposed to help the least among us have often been stretched to the point of failure. We confess our broken social systems that keep us from finding new ways of reaching out and connecting with others. Even so, we are grateful that we have also found new ways to connect, new hope in small acts of kindness, new energy and new ways to engage each other. We've even experienced moments this year, oh God, of, of hope and blessing with a new member, with uh, work done around our church congregation's building, and blessing children. We know, oh God, that there is more that we would like to be doing. Help us, give us new ideas and energy for this coming year, that we can be your loving presence to others here and now. We pray that you would restore us into the caring ways of helping the most vulnerable. Guide us to repair and plant new communities that live into your ways of love, justice, and healing. And lead us into ways of deep compassion and empathy to care for our neighbors in need. We pray all of these things and so much more as you bless the beginning of this new year. Help us to live out the prayer that Jesus taught by saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear now this reading from John's Gospel, chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, 
and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. May God bless this reading. Christmas has been celebrated. Although this year has been so different from any we have known, many of us still shopped, even if it was online. We ate, even with fewer people around the table. We received and sent gifts. We saw loved ones, even if it was just on Zoom. And hopefully, you found ways to worship God's gift in the baby Jesus. We've also celebrated the beginning of a new year, one that we hope holds more promise than what we experienced in 2020. So, now what? This prologue to the Gospel of John reminds us what comes next. Several years ago, my family and I went on vacation to Las Vegas. I had never been there before, and I must say it was something else. What I think made the biggest impression on me was all the lights. The visual input as we walked the strip was almost overwhelming. Lights of all colors were in massive displays of blinking neon, beckoning people to take notice and each sign seemed to loom larger than the one before. This barrage of lights was overpowering, and yet this monumental display was nothing to the true source of light of which the gospel speaks. The light that came into the world through the word of God was a light that could not be put out. It is a light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. This is the light of the creation story in Genesis that now comes and shines in a new form of the coming of Christ into the world. When people encountered John the Baptist in the wilderness, there were some who thought that perhaps he was the light. Yet he made it clear that he was only a witness to the light. He said that the true light was coming. And it did. Christ was born. Why? Why in heaven would God want to become flesh? What purpose was there in coming to earth in a human form to endure the pain and suffering and problems of earthly life? And can you begin to imagine how appalling this thought was to the Jewish people? It was sacrilegious to think that God could become like us. The Greek word flesh in this passage is the same word that Paul uses over and over to describe human nature in all its weakness and sin. Why then is incarnation reasonable? The answer to that question rests in the surprisingly good news that God has paid us a visit. There is nothing reasonable about that except that it reveals the link to which God is willing to go to be present with God's creation. Through the presence of God has always been made known and continues to be made known in various ways. In this instance, God has taken on the particular form of a Jew from Nazareth. The God that is invisible becomes known and experienced through Jesus. God chose to become flesh so that God might be experienced in a different way. God is a God who can instantly and immediately relate to all human need. And as they say, you know the rest of the story. Jesus grew and lived like other persons did. He ministered and sought justice. He challenged and he healed and he was killed. So now what? How do we still experience the incarnation of God in Christ? We don't know Jesus the same way that those who lived with him did. Yet John says that all who believe in him, he gave power to become children of God. That's where we come in. We who believe have been empowered. How does the good news become flesh now? It becomes flesh in us, the children of God. 
There was a popular song by Joan Osborne that asked, if God have a face, what would it look like? Maybe that question could be rephrased as a statement. God has a face. It looks like your face and my face and the faces of humans everywhere. If people want to know what God looks like, and they do, they are going to look at God's people. People who experience something of God's presence will not likely arrive at that moment by persuasive arguments or logical thinking or scientific proof. People experience God when they come to know people who appear in flesh as the good news of God. God's incarnation in Jesus Christ is God's way of saying to us, I love you. We know that God loves us, and yet putting it in terms of the teaching and healing of Jesus Christ helps it come alive for us. It puts that love in focus. And indeed, when we are God's presence for others, Christ come alive in their lives also. We are the skin. We are the flesh. We are the good news. Our author, John, is trying to get the reader to look beyond the obvious, to expand our thinking and to see things in a new way. Throughout his gospel, he points to the light and asks the reader to see the signs and wonders. The historical Jesus lived among us, yet that historical manifestation is only a glimpse of what Christ is. Christ continues to be revealed in the world today. God continues to create and call the word into life. And one of the most powerful way that happens is in our own lives. What does God look like? A lot like you and me. We embody the living presence of Christ. The gospel writer says the obvious that not everyone will become a believer, but he says that those who deal will become the children of God. This is not only a story of revelation. It's a story of empowerment. If we accept the gift of God's love through Christ, we become in some way like Christ. That is what it means to be children of God. As Christ's love is poured out on us, we must pour it out on others. Dr. Albert Schweitzer once said, sometimes our light goes out, but is blown again into instant flame by an encounter with another human being. Each of us owes the deepest thanks to those who have rekindled this inner light. A few days ago, we began a new year. In many ways, it's a blank page yet to be written. It's an opportunity for us to decide how we will live. We are each given the ability to accept the love of Christ into our lives. We are also given the ability to express that love in many ways every day of our lives. What is it that you want to accomplish in the next 12 months? What kind of person do you want to be? How will you manifest the good news of God with us? How will you bear witness to the light of Christ in the coming year? There are countless ways to show the world that God's love is alive in you. The following poem, First Coming, by Madeline LaIngle reminds us that God did not wait for the perfect time to be born into the world, for there is no such thing, she says. God did not wait till the world was ready, till nations were at peace. God came when the heavens were unsteady and prisoners cried out for release. God did not wait for the perfect time. God came when the need was deep and great. God dined with sinners in all their grime, turned water into wine. God did not wait till hearts were pure. In joy, God came to a tarnished world of doubt, to a world like ours of anguish, shame. God came and God's light would not go out. God came to a world which did not mesh to heal the tangles, shield its scorn. In the mystery of the word made flesh, the maker of the stars was born. We cannot wait till the world is sane, 
to raise our songs with joyful voice, for to share our grief, to touch our pain. God came with love. Rejoice, rejoice. Ours is a God who continues to come into the world, a world of pain and grief and suffering. God comes in this time of uncertainty about the future and God brings healing and love and hope. And God is still made flesh in the children of God who help in transforming this world. God comes now in all who bear witness to the light in the darkness that will not go out. I hope you've prepared your table of communion that we can now share in communion together. We're grateful for the word that Reverend Reed has shared with us. Would you pray with me? Lord, bless these elements of bread and wine. May they be for us your real presence. May they become for us the strength that we need to embolden our spiritual life. We look to the past, O oh God, with gratitude. We look to the future with hope. It has been a difficult year, but we remember now, even more so maybe than in the past, that your presence is with us. Even in this moment where we share these simple gifts of fruit of the vine and earth created grains for the bread, simple as they are, and yet sustaining us, even in our spiritual life. We ask all of this and so much more. Amen. Jesus took the bread and he broke it when he was with the disciples and he, he reminded them to do this every time they meet, to remember him. And he wanted us to remember that his blood shed for us, his body broken for us, for our sins, to put us on that right path. And what better time of the year to take stock of our path? Which direction are we headed? And what a great time of the year to lift up that Jesus loved us so much and that God's love in Jesus is still in us today. Through this very act that we do, we can humble ourselves in this moment as a community of faith and once again seek God's guidance and reconciliation for our lives. Would you join me? Lord God, we thank you so much for this community of faith. Now go forth, blessing all that you meet, finding ways to see God's presence wherever you turn, taking time to thank God for God's very presence all around us, even in the beauty of this time of the year. Now go forth in peace. Amen.
Thank you.